So, what are wires made from? When you perform your investigation of materials using the simple electrical circuit with a light bulb, here it is, it's always useful to have a piece of electrical wire uh, in the mix. So it's one of the materials. Well, it's not really a material, is it? It's a combination of materials. It's, a, it's an object, I suppose. It's a man-made item which comprises different materials. But it's worth putting a piece in of a mains cable from home. So there's a little piece cut from, for some, from some mains cable. And then testing it in our circuit. So let's just check our little light bulb. So switches operated there, so the light bulb is lighting up. And children might test it like this. Nothing wrong with that, with that at all. And then, yeah, well, it's, it's got to go in the insulator's pile, isn't it? But if we're careful about it and really have a close look, you'll be able to see that if we touch the electrical connections onto the ends, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit awkward to do it, but there we are. And that's the metal part of this electrical wire touching. So that's an important thing for children to see. And it really gives them the reason why um, electrical wires uh, are made of two materials which work together and it isn't a wire without the fact that it's got the two materials one which is the insulator on the outside for protection and to stop the metal inside touching things it shouldn't and then the metal itself which conducts the electricity and allows us to use it in electrical circuits to turn appliances on and off like our light bulbs so let's take a pair of pliers and take this a little bit a little bit further. We'll take some pliers and we'll actually remove a piece of the conductor and have a closer look. Because we don't just want to know um, that it works. We want to know really what it's made from. So I'm just going to get a fine pair of pliers and pull on that central conductor. There are actually three conductors here. One in a red plastic, one in a black plastic, there was a one down the centre and that was encased in the overall grey plastic. So that's a common piece of mains cable that you would find in walls and ceilings in a domestic situation. So it's got quite a thick piece of copper in there, three separate uh, strands of copper separate from each other. So as I said, it's a metal and we can identify it as copper. It's not the same as iron or steel. It's, a, it's an absolutely beautiful material. It's softer than those materials, uh, softer than iron or steel, and it can be bent into shape, and it can carry a lot of electricity. It's a very good conductor of electricity, and uh, really the world, the world relies on copper as a way of transferring electricity from one place to another. So copper is a very, very important material. So let's just place that piece of copper on its own in our circuit. And there we go. The bulb's at its full brightness there. It's so good at letting electricity through. And of course, if you were to look at the wires in our, the rest of the wires in our circuit, they've all got the plastic insulation on the outside. This is a much thicker type of insulation, which makes it a bit more difficult to bend this wire. So this is much more highly flexible, the green and the yellow and the black and red that I've got in this circuit. So by altering the amount of material we have and the type of material, which is the insulation on the outside, we're going to alter the flexibility of the wire. And some materials which carry very dangerous um, electrical currents at home, they have to be shrouded in much thicker plastic insulation. And the insulation is used by electricians who come to repair and fix and install things in our houses. And that insulation is in all different colours, shapes and sizes. So you can have this tubular insulation here and the conducting wire would go down the very centre of it. Like that. And join the things and then this piece of insulation would be put over such that it stops anybody from touching it or it stops this wire from touching another wire next to it. So this insulation is used to colour code the wires and to uh, protect them. So there's another piece of insulation there. 
So insulation, very important, but the conducting material down the centre, very important, uh, is made from copper. And very important world resource. Let's have a look at a very common piece of a thin electrical wire we could use in a circuit and we'll take some cutters and cut through. And there you see the bare conductor inside and there's the plastic that's been partly pulled off. So we'll pull that off. And that's a piece of sleeving, no different to the material used in all these other pieces I've shown you, except this is just much, much thinner. So let's have a look at this now. We've pulled off the insulation from the outside and we'll see with this type of cable, which has to be extra flexible, it's got lots of strands. And each of these strands is just like a sort of a hair, really. And there are seven tiny strands here. Why have they bothered with seven? Well, if we'd used the same amount of material and made a thicker wire, then it simply wouldn't be as flexible. And with this type of single core wire, once it's been bent a few times and then bent back into shape, the material can't uh, stand all that bending and starts to fracture. So eventually the, 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 the material would, would break. Whereas very thin strands all together and inside these are usually sort of just given a twist inside. All the thin strands together makes the wire much more durable. It can be bent, twisted and reshaped lots of times. But single core wire can't be. So that would be called multi-core wire and that would be single core wire. And commonly we use multi-core wire in all of our little experiments. So wires, the, the actual nature of the wires, what are they made from? That outer material, by the way, is often these days is called PVC, PVC plastic, polyvinyl chloride plastic, and it's a very good uh, insulator. There are other forms of plastics as well, but that's the most common one that you would find these days. Fabulous.